Cincinnati, 48 to 14 over SMU. It was a 100% postgame win expectancy for the Bearcats. This is what I told you on the Bet US show that I was worried about because I felt like yep. the matchup played directly into Cincinnati's hands. Cincinnati gave up 66 passing yards in this game. Tanner Mordecai was 15 out of 26 for 66 yards with one touchdown. They ran the ball, SMU did, 31 times for 133 yards. And and they weren't great at running the football. Like they they still had more success running than they did passing. But this was a woodshed beating. Uh just it, you yeah. you knew at some point it's kind of like with Clemson, right? You knew that Cincinnati was going to wake up and you're just hoping that it's not this game, right? If you had the uh, the other side. I mean, four of the first five drives for Cincinnati were touchdowns. And and one of those was, of course, a fumble uh, from SMU that led to a, uh, you know, uh, led to another touchdown. It wasn't a short field, but. Well, the first, the first two were short fields. The first, because I turned it off yeah. after the, the SMU fumble, because I was like, there goes my bat, whatever. So SMU punted Cincinnati special teams, returned it for 22 yards to Cincy 47. Cincinnati, one play, 47 yard touchdown. Yeah. Then SMU punts from their own 13 and it's blocked. SMU first and 10, or Cincinnati first and 10 at the SMU 25. And then that fumble, SMU was moving the ball. That's the only time all game SMU really moved the ball. And Trey Seegers just got got, got the ball knocked out, uh, just yeah. straight up lost it. And they were first and 10 at the Cincinnati 24. They were knocking on the door. And then Cincy drives 78 yards for the touchdown there. So but that even that point off turnovers wasn't like they necessarily, you know, ben, they, they benefited from special teams uh, more than they benefited from that. And then since he missed two field goals in yes, half, like in the middle of it, this could have been so much worse. It's in the middle of it. And I mean, SMU did not score until the fourth <laughs> yeah. quarter did not score. Uh, they missed a field goal of their own after a 10 play drive since he, you know, turnover on downs late in the ball game. I mean, this, yeah, the whole thing was, was bananas. So at this point I do have written down here with all the chaos that has happened with Oregon and of course, Michigan state getting beat and whatnot. I think at this point, because you've got Michigan and Ohio State playing this week, I think Cincinnati is a favorite to get into the playoff at this point. Because I don't know who else, like, I. this all comes down to Notre Dame and Cincinnati, right? Like, I, Oklahoma State might be able to find their way in there. Oklahoma, maybe. But we see what the committee thinks about Oklahoma at this point. I, it looks like it's going to be Cincinnati in there if they can win out. Now, obviously, they've got Houston in the AAC title game which is going to be a hell of a ball game. I'm just, the fact that everybody was so worked up for so long about this, and now here they are, like Cincy doing what Cincy is supposed to do. This looks like... <laughs> yeah, well, they, so I'm looking at this because basically the, the way that Cincy gets left out is Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC championship. Yeah, but even then, you would still need, because Ohio State... Or Michigan is going to be out, right? So even then, right? So you have you have SEC championship winner, then you have Ohio State. Those are locked, right? More right. Ohio State, Michigan winner, whatever. Yes. Those are locked, right? Yeah. And then you have the, I'm looking at the playoff rankings for the first time this season, Gary. I just want to let you know this is a big deal. I, I normally don't look at them until the last week because they don't matter and we don't need a playoff. But I think the problem here for Cincinnati is, I mean, they they need to they, they need they to win convincing. They play in Houston. Like, are they playing Houston right now? No, they're week? playing. They're playing Houston in the AAC East title. East Carolina. Game. Okay, yeah. so they Which need East Carolina. Game. They need Houston. Houston to win big, and they need to win big. I don't think Notre Dame can beat Stanford bad enough to jump. I don't think so either, because Cincinnati is going to have another uh, data point. Like, but Cincy then is, Oklahoma Cincy. State. I think best case scenario for Oklahoma State is they they beat Oklahoma convincingly which puts Baylor into the Big 12 championship yes. game, and then they beat a Baylor that looks a lot better than when they played. Yep. I think that Oklahoma State at that point could jump. Could jump Cincy, especially if Cincy isn't convincing and find their way in. But the deal is here. I mean, Cincy very likely to go to the playoff, especially if, if Alabama is who we think they are right now. I think that they won't be able to do anything against Georgia. That, that may not hold true. But the, the problem, Gary, is not that Cincy can't get into the playoff. It's that they can't play themselves in. They have to rely on all this other crap, even if they do everything exactly right. That's the problem. The problem is that since he's national championship, 
is not in their hands where it is yeah. for, you know, 60, honestly, probably 30 other teams. It is for, for a hundred other FBS teams. They literally cannot play themselves in the national championship conversation. They have to have other stuff happen. It just so happens that this year, other stuff is happening for them. So this isn't like a vindication of the playoff committee. Also with all the, again, <laughs> playoff committee, what do they want? Eyeballs with all the yes. talk about Cincinnati. They're just making a business decision. They don't give, they don't care. They don't care at all about, what, what a college football championship should be. They don't care at all about G5 versus P5. They care about eyeballs. And this year it might be the most profitable decision to put Cincinnati to actually put in. Whereas Cincinnati in the in. past, it has not been. And so it's still about eyeballs and teams still can't play their way to a championship, which is a flaw. Well, d- tell me this, who actually brings more eyeballs right now? Would it be Cincinnati or would it be Oklahoma state? I think it might be Cincinnati. Um, uh, yes, not not just in terms of comparing fan bases, but like narratives and everything. Absolutely, yeah, narratives. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just talking like overall narratives for because I, obviously the way that Alabama is able to get like huge ratings this season is because they play a ton of close games, right? That's the way that those ratings actually yes. work. People realize there's a shot they could get beat. I need to tune in and watch this. It's the, the same thing with Ohio State because this this Ohio State Michigan State game is not going to have a, a large rating. Like it's it's just not like it's it, it it'll be big because it's ABC at noon. But otherwise, you know, we all know how these things work. Cincinnati, I mean, last year, they were undefeated playing in the Peach Bowl against Georgia, and that game drew, like, almost 10 million viewers. I mean, it's it's a pretty sizable audience. And now, it was on New Year's Day yeah. and all that standalone window, all that good stuff. Uh, Gary Lewis jumped in, Cincinnati over Oklahoma State for TV ratings. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, just the way that it goes, because people, there are still a lot of, like, casual fans that don't realize what Oklahoma State is doing. So if it becomes Oklahoma State, then, yeah. Now, I guess the thing that could be interesting here is if Oklahoma were to beat Oklahoma State in Bedlam next week and and then they had to beat Oklahoma State again, then does the committee say, ah, maybe we had them pegged wrong? Like, well, because that, that would be yeah, the brand I, matchup you don't want if you're Cincinnati. Because I, I, think that, I think that Wake Forest is falling a lot. Michigan State is falling a lot, which means Baylor and Oklahoma are both plausibly top 10 games for Oklahoma state over the next two weeks, but then also Oklahoma will have a chance at two top 10 wins. If they go and blow the doors off Oklahoma state, like they have done in the past twice in a row. Yeah. It'll be tough to keep them out because you know, people will watch Oklahoma, especially if there's a chance that they could beat. So speaking of, it just needs to root for Auburn next week. That's what they need to do. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.